So here's what we're replacing. These are the uh, typical vinyl shutter. You know, that's just for looks. We got these back uh, 12 years ago, a little less than 12 years ago when we bought the house for like 20 some dollars a piece. I think, I'm sure they're a lot higher now. But what we're shooting for here is to make, you know, real wooden shutters with a barn door rail. And we've got the rail right down here. And of course it has to be for outdoors. It's not just your typical indoor. So it's galvanized and it's weatherproof. And so we're gonna be hanging that rail up here. We're gonna make a header board to go up here on this vinyl. And then we're going to hang everything to that. But our, right now we're just gonna make shutters. And so right now, we're looking at going, we don't want to go quite as long as this. So we're going to go about four and a half because uh, our top's going to be about the same as that, maybe a little lower. So we're going four and a half foot on our shutters. And then our width is just going to be five one by fours wide. And where I'm standing on our one by fours, that's the only thing we're using to make these shutters is just one by fours. They're treated one by fours. And so all of them are, let's say one by fours, but they're three and a half. All of them are three and a half, and so when you multiply that out by five, what do you got? That's like 17 and a half inches wide. So that's how wide our shutters are going to be. So four and a half foot by 17 and a half wide. So let's get started cutting. So now to make ourselves uh, more efficient, uh, we are cutting every board that's the same length at the same time, you know, in succession of one another. So right now we have our saw set up for four foot six inches and we're just going ahead and... So that's a four foot six inch board to go along with our four foot six inch pile, which we know we need 20 of because we're making four shutters. And then when we move to the next length, we'll cut every one of them the same and then move to the next length so that we're efficient. So our goal, you don't have to do it this way, cut every board that we need now, have it set aside, and then begin to assemble the shutters so that we can, well, I mean, be a little quicker, uh, but you can do it however you want, but we're gonna do it that way. So we're gonna keep cutting until we get all of our cuts straight. We'll show you how it looks after it's all said and done. So we've got our boards, well, most of them cut. Get ready to screw them together. Before we do that, we just wanna show you. This is our four and a half inch, uh, four, four foot, six inch length right here. Uh, that's for our windows, may not be the same for you, but, uh, and then we've got three pieces cut to go across the, you know, top, uh, bottom, middle. Uh, and these are, you know, really important because they're gonna tie in all these boards together. Uh, so they're gonna keep them from going out and expanding. These, we're putting them up the sides. Now, these are really just cosmetic. And then we're gonna take, after we get all this together and measure our board to go across at an angle like this but you could do a lot of different things you could take these out and not even fool with that if you don't want to we've made them that way before or you can go across you know with one right here if you want to but we really just prefer this look and we want our shutters to be about an inch and a half thick by the time we're done uh, because of all of our hardware that you'll see in a little while uh, but we are using one and a quarter inch screws, exterior screws. We feel like that screws are gonna hold it together better. Um, at first, anything is gonna look good, but after weather, heat, moisture, whatever it may be, if you're using nails or if you're using a brad nail or whatever you're using, um, they may not hold together as well, just like a deck. You know, using, an, in my opinion, screws generally hold things together better when they start to try to bend or warp which would wheel over the years. So we're using that. We're gonna put this together and then we're gonna come back and see you so that we can show you how non-geometrical minds come to measure out a board for an angle. Okay, so let's talk about these center pieces, these angles. Everything's straight, everything's simple with the exception of these. They're a little bit cantankerous. If you're good at geometry, then bless your heart, we're not. So you can see we've got this one cut already and uh, it's in there pretty much like a glove. And that one actually can just be copied again and done the opposite direction and it actually fits. But let me show you how we're, how we're coming to this is we are moving this right up here on the corner like so, marking it right there. And then we're coming on this side and marking it where it meets 
the wood and then flipping it over taking a straight edge and going from one mark to the other mark you get them lined up like so and there we go that now we're going to take it over to the saw and cut that angle right there which is actually the same angle as this but we're just showing you how we come about it and uh fits in there and then once you get one cut then chances are good if you'll before you screw it in just make sure that it'll probably fit in this one too see how that one goes so we could use that in either one so that's how we did it you might find a different way but it works for us well here's our four shutters now we still have to stain them but you can see these two go together they point toward each other that's how we're making them anyway and these two as well so we're going to stain these let them dry and then we'll begin to put our hardware on and put them up so now it's time to stain these shutters and we are using we actually already had the stain on hand but it's an outdoor stain and sealer so you know this is really good stuff actually and a gallon of stain goes a long ways if you've never used stain before goes a long 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 ways and so and uh got a four inch brush um, and then just in case we've got a smaller brush to do in those tricky little corners there so we're gonna get started well they're stained that took about an hour to do it all used a big four inch brush that's the only thing i ended up using in the stain and uh might have used maybe two inches of stain out of that a uh, whole gallon so it, it that goes a long way so just gonna let those dry then we'll move on to our next step so while we're waiting on the shutters and the rails to dry and our hardware and everything i want to show you we kind of uh come up with this idea to make these what i would call headers here because we have the situation where this was the original house years ago when it was built like 30 years ago and then somebody later added this garage and so what we did almost 12 years ago is we enclosed this to make living space, which made sense to us. So we have vinyl siding, so we have brick vinyl siding. Now, the original house has this uh, like header board as what I would call it going across, and we've got this one mounted to that, and we'll mount those down there to it. But for this one, we felt like that coming up with our own would be necessary for a few reasons. One is it puts us about the same coming out from the house and then also that gives us a nice smooth flat surface to mount our rail on and our rails that are over here are actually the same length as this so this is not going to be real noticeable so we wanted to we stained it dark so that it's not like oh look at that it's just going to really blend in with the rail once we get it up there but this would just to kind of give us some extra support strength and also make it nice smooth and flat across and not have to put that rail on that vinyl it actually be able to come off of it so so let me show you the hardware that we're using national hardware is the brand you buy it at lowe's uh, tractor supply lots of local places and each one of these boxes that you get these are like 30 bucks a piece uh, you're going to get two sets of wheels and this bracket to mount onto the top of your shutter or barn door this is really solid and we're going to paint all that black not the wheels themselves, but the, anything that you can see. And then you've got these brackets that slide onto the rails that you mount them to your wall with. And then you've got these guides or wheels or whatever where your shutter is gonna slide back and forth so that it don't flop back and forth and they're adjustable. And so what we're doing is taking those brackets, sliding them on a foot and a half in on each side and then spray painting them black. You'll probably have to spray paint, you know, any kind of scratches if you've already spray painted. And uh, because it's a little snug as it goes on there, which it's supposed to be, but you can see how it fits um, right here. You see how that fits on that side. So we're gonna do the rest of them and move on to the next step. Okay, so we're ready to put our rail up. Our brackets are on. We've got them a foot and a half in. We've got some galvanized screws here that we're going to be putting in up here uh, first thing first let's let me get it up here and get our cameraman to make sure that i am where i need to be i need to go right or left 
Left. Left. More. Back to the right a little bit. Right there. Yeah, right here. All right, great. So, then we simply just take that and... I'm not gonna tighten it up all the way yet. I just wanna get the other bolt in. Make sure we're still where we need to be. Good? Yep. Okay. Great. Alright, so let me show you what we're doing on the back of here. Um, so you can see this wheel assembly and this bracket that attaches does it with bolts and you just drill your holes. We'll show you how we do that in a second. But you have to make room for this, this particular type of wheel assembly. That bolt comes down so you kind of have to notch that out just a little bit so we just took a skill saw and set it to like three quarters of an inch and so just went in there and kind of you know rattled around for a few seconds and made a little notch that's all it takes i'll show you right here <clears throat> is that just slides right down in there like that now to mark our holes we come to this side and we just took a drill and started that out but we're gonna make our holes a little bit bigger. So we're gonna come in with, we're gonna come in with a 3 8 inch and just drill our holes all the way through. And we'll finish that up and then we'll put our wheel assembly on. Okay, so we got our holes drilled as you can see and Judah's putting on those and we take those bolts that are actually included in with your wheels and stuff. Three of them and then these three nuts as he puts those on and then we'll just tighten that up. And to tighten it up uh, good, we're using half inch socket to tighten that up um, so it's nice and snug. Okay, so now here's where you're going to have to have at least two people no matter what. Is we've got our wheel assembly on. We've got our black uh, facing out. And we decided to leave these bolts silver because it kind of looks good in my opinion. And so now these don't just stay in place. So we're going to take it up. And then he's going to start it out. So now you have these little end caps that go in the end of your rail and you just take it, you kind of have to mess with it, pry it in there a little bit to get it started and then take a hammer and just tap it on in there uh, to get it closed off. As he's working on that, I'll show you this side. As you can see, this side is in and it keeps it from going off the track. So now that that's up there, we also have this little wheelie pulley guide whatever you want to call it and this keeps it from you know going in and out this is adjustable back as you can see the nut underneath it can uh, be adjusted back forward whichever so this keeps you from having a bunch of play so that wind doesn't you know beat it to death and then rolls as you roll and of course as we pull them in together they're going to meet in the middle and when this one goes to the middle it's actually going to be about right there. So no matter where we're at, that wheel is always going to keep it from flopping out. And we are in business. The only thing we need, some handles and maybe a lock on there to lock it. We're going to clean behind that on this uh, vinyl siding as well. But for right now, you can see what it looks like closed. And once again, open it up. And it's about where we would be open as you can see a nice addition and that's about two hundred dollars total with everything hardware uh, wood and that's wood prices right now which went down some but um, everything there is about two hundred dollars if you do it yourself now that's more than vinyl ones but not a whole lot more so 
we think this is a nice addition plus if you live in an area like us that every now and then gets spin off of a hurricane or something like that then you could shut that up and prevent your uh, windows from busting at least the, that's the hope so thanks for watching guys